What's going on guys? Finneasy Breezy here uh, for the 11th installment of my anime vlog series uh, and I kind of find it really hard to believe that I've already put out 11 of these videos for you guys. I remember when I first started and I thought, you know, what's something really cool that I could put on my channel? Uh, you know, I I'd love to get reviews out for you guys for all the shows that I watch, but that's just so much work, so much, you know, time committed to do that and I don't really have it available to me. Um, so I thought maybe, you know, a vlog series would be a great way for me to give you guys a little bit of a synopsis of some of these shows that I watch since I watch uh, so many different series. And I hope that, that you all would enjoy it. And it seems from the feedback that I've gotten that a lot of you do enjoy the videos. So I'm, I'm glad uh, that this uh, sort of worked out for the channel and that you guys, you know, have something else uh, interesting to watch from me. Uh, with all that out of the way, why don't we just start talking about the first thing that I had watched. Uh, and that is... Madaka Box. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar uh, with Madaka Box, it came out a little while ago, actually. I think probably two or three years ago, um, the official release uh, for this was. But this was one of the shows that I picked up during the Right Stuff um, Christmas uh, extravaganza. I picked up both Madaka Box and Madaka Box Abnormal. And it was just something that I was holding off to watch because I knew it was a show that I would enjoy. So I wanted to put it in a place where after watching something that I didn't enjoy or that I wasn't really... Uh, looking for in a certain genre that I would be able to to pick this out and watch it uh, and I have to say I did enjoy it uh, it is kind of odd though um, the first season you know just the normal Madaka box sort of has a slice of life comedy feel to it um, you know our main character uh, Madaka is the student council president uh, and she has a few uh, you know main characters surrounding her and their primary goal is essentially to help the students of the school with their everyday problems you know little things here or there and you sort of get a feel that Madaka is, is sort of like supernatural almost you know she's extremely powerful which is really weird for this sort of uh, style anime that this started off as and you sort of felt like something was was getting a little strange and especially towards the last three episodes it sort of morphed into an action and it was kind of odd because it, I wasn't expecting that. And then after starting to watch the second season, it became even more of an action. Uh, and so much so where everyone had like super abilities now all of a sudden. Even, uh, I forget what the, the, the male um, main character's name is on here. Um, but even Zenkichi. Even Zenkichi, who was a normal high school guy, all of a sudden is really powerful. And it's, it was kind of odd. And after doing a little research, I found out that this was from the same uh, people uh, behind Kill a Kill, and I can sort of completely see similarities uh, between Madaka Box and Kill a Kill. Uh, it's sort of like a watered down Kill a Kill, to be honest with you. Um, so if that's something that maybe you weren't expecting or you hadn't thought this show was going to go in that direction, uh, and you were a big fan of Kill a Kill, uh, maybe it's worth your time to check out. Uh, like I said, I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't think it was worth the purchase, though. So if this is something that you were interested in, uh, I would say stream it. Uh, there's really no uh, reason to actually own it. So next, I wanted to watch something really, really simple. Uh, and this is actually a new release that probably went under a lot of people's radars. I don't think there was really a lot of hype around it. Uh, and it's a very, very simple anime. So maybe uh, not a lot of people are talking about it. I know I really haven't seen much about it. Uh, but that is uh, Seki-kun, The Master of Killing Time. Uh, and this is a fairly new release. Like I said, it came out, and I think it was May... Uh, late maybe late May, late April, uh, and this is just your as basic of a slice of life as you can get. I mean, if you were a big fan of like uh, shows like uh, Azumanga Daioh, I think that you will really, really, really enjoy uh, Seki-kun. Uh, it's a very simple show. I mean, I think each episode is only about eight minutes long. I think there was what twenty. It's, I think it said twenty episodes, twenty-one episodes, but each episode is only about eight minutes long. Uh, and the main plot behind uh, Seki-kun is each episode takes place in a classroom. Uh, with uh, Seki-kun, and I forget what the main heroine's name is, uh, Yokoi, between uh, Seki and Yokoi. And it's the entire show is told from the perspective of Yokoi. And in, in the classroom, she sits next to Seki, who is a silent protagonist. You don't hear him speak throughout the entire series. And basically what happens is he does something every day at his desk that is not school or, or school related. So, for example, I, I know one of the funniest ones I thought was one one episode, you know, all Yokoi wants to do is, is learn and study and prepare for tests and whatnot. And so whatever Seki's doing every time distracts her horribly. There was one episode where he was playing, like, chess. And she looks over at him and she's like, oh, he's just, why is he playing chess? And Seki is having, like, this sort of 
weird chess battle between the two sides. He's not actually playing chess. He's having like a mini war. And Yokoi is watching this and just giving each character, the pawns, the bishops, the knights, their own little narrative in her head. So she likes to say that, you know, Seki is distracting her, but she sort of plays into it herself where she's sort of giving all these little characters and the things that Seki does narratives. There was an episode where he had little robots that looked like, you know, the Transformers. And she made them into a little the Transformer family. And, like, they had their own little plot line throughout the entire series. There's, like, three or four episodes where the Transformer family was in. And there was an episode where he made a tiny uh, test driving course on his desk. And he would control a little remote control car with a controller to take his fake, like, uh, driver's license test. And he even printed out his own little driver's license. It, it's It's cute. The show is really cute, very, very lighthearted, uh, and if it's something that, you know, you're looking for to just break the mold of, of, of things that you've been watching, including, you know, violent anime or really deep-thinking anime, this is something you can put on and just for, you know, eight minutes at a time, really give a good chuckle uh, and, and something to, to enjoy. I highly recommend checking out uh, The Master of Killing Time. I think it's a great watch. I think you will highly enjoy it. Unfortunately, this is another show I don't think is worth purchasing, uh, just because there's really no extras there's nothing really special about the dvd there's nothing special about the blu-ray i'm sure um so i don't think there's a need to purchase it but i do think uh you guys should check it out next is a show that i burned through and i'm talking about burn through i think i watched this in two or three sittings uh and that is the second season for tokyo ghoul uh you know the the way that this show is and the way that tokyo ghoul is for me each episode you know, the first 10 minutes of it, like this. The last 10 minutes of it is like this. And it just leads into each episode after that, and I, I couldn't stop watching it. Um, there's not really too much for me to say about Tokyo Ghoul, since it's the second season of it. Uh, if you haven't watched the first season, there's really not much to be gained by watching the second season, clearly. Um, but it basically builds off of the first season, and I think the first season was more built for character development, and then the second season had a lot of action in it. I mean, almost every episode was just fighting scenes, you know, gory fighting scenes, a little bit of character development. I was kind of disappointed with the way that the characters developed. I feel almost feel like the first and second seasons were done completely differently. You know, I didn't really do much um, reading to figure out on the backstory if, if they changed, you know, source material, if they went in their own direction. I really don't know if it was truthful to the manga or not, um, but I sort of felt like it was a little bit disappointing, but nevertheless, like I said, I burned through it because it's Tokyo Ghoul and I enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it's worth buying. I'm going to go that far to say it. I really don't think this is worth buying unless you bought the first season. If you bought the first season, definitely get the second season because it looks nice next to the first season. Um, and I, I, from what I read, was that this second season sold very poorly. Um, you know, they ended it, they didn't really end it in a cliffhanger, but they did end it in a way where you can easily foreseeably see more, uh, definitely more Tokyo Ghoul. Um, but because of what I read was that it sold so poorly that there may not be a third season, which is a little disappointing because I really would have liked to see what happened to Kaneki. Uh, you know, they sort of left it open whether he dies, whether he gets, you know, ca I don't say captured, but I, I really would like to see what happens with him. Um, but I have the feeling that it's not going to happen unless, of course, I read the manga, but who has time for reading? Um, but, you know, if you watch Tokyo Ghoul Part 1, you can't not watch Tokyo Ghoul Part 2. There's no question. Uh, so I would say check it out. So the fourth and final anime I have to talk to you guys about today is interesting. Uh, it it's one of the first times this has ever happened to me, uh, and I doubt that this has happened to other people in this way, um, but what I watched was uh, an anime, an old anime, <laughs> called uh, Eat Man 98. Uh, and if you aren't familiar with Eat Man 98, I don't blame you at all, <laughs> because I wasn't either. Um, a couple episodes back, a couple months ago actually, I had mentioned that I was picking up a lot of old anime on eBay. There was a seller who just listed an entire anime collection. And I actually shot a video unboxing it all for you guys twice. Uh, and both times the video got deleted somehow. I don't know where it went, uh, but I became so frustrated with it that I wasn't going to shoot another one a third time uh, because of how many anime there were in that uh, pickup video. I think that there were 15 different series in that video. Uh, so I just didn't have the drive to do it again. And I figured that once I got around to watching each show, I would tell you about it in the vlog, which we're doing right now. 
Uh, so, Eat Man 98, uh, essentially the original anime, Eat Man, well, the original manga, Eat Man, uh, got adapted into an anime. And the fans of the original anime adaptation were so uh, just, I don't want to say annoyed, but like frustrated and aggravated with the adaptation that they went ahead and remade the anime that they had made a year prior. Uh, so I guess the original uh, Eat Man came out in 97, so they redid it to Eat Man 98. Uh, so if you're familiar with Eat Man at all, uh, this is just essentially a, I don't want to say a reimagining, but it, it's more of a faithful adaptation to the manga, from my understanding. Uh, if anybody is more knowledgeable on Eat Man, you know, please let me know. Uh, so what I had said in the beginning uh, when I started talking about this was something that had never happened to me before. All the research I had done said this had a dub, which it does, for the first two episodes, and that's it. Uh, I mean, the, the show, this show itself is 12 episodes. Only the first two have a dub. So once the third episode started and it was subbed, and I'm like, that's weird. I don't remember changing the settings. So I went, I looked, and in the menu, it says English dub, episodes one and two only. And I was like, I, I've never seen an anime that started a dub and dropped it. I don't know if it's because it was so poorly received or they realized in dubbing in, in the dubbing process that this was going nowhere. The show was not going to sell. It was not popular enough and they just quit the dub altogether. I have no idea what transpired to, to have this uh, come about. But I will say, thank God it did. Because the dub on the first two episodes was horrendous. I'm talking about I had no idea what was going on. I could not get into the show at all because of how horrible the dub was and I almost if the dub had continued I probably would have dropped the show completely I probably would have stopped watching it but once the third episode started and it was subbed I said you know what I'm kind of interested to hear what the main character sounds like and how this goes so I watched the third episode sub and it was pretty good so then I was like you know what let me finish the whole show out at this point it's only 12 episodes I bought it I might as well watch it I'm interested to see what the plot is like and I thoroughly enjoyed it after those first two episodes um so if you looked up trailers before for Eat Man, if you've even heard of it, and you heard the dub and you thought, wow, this is trash, I'd say give it another look for the sub uh, only. Uh, it was a lot better than the dub. Uh, and basically what Eat Man is about is our main character, Bolt Crank. Th that's how you can tell it's a, a 90s anime when the main character's name is Bolt Crank. Um, and so he has the ability to eat metal, eat pretty much anything, and then, you know, transpose it into his on his arm. So, for example, if he eats a handgun, uh, he can then generate that handgun out of his hand and, and use it like a weapon. Um, so a lot of the times throughout the series, he'll be, you know, he'll destroy like a giant mech and he'll slowly eat part by part. You know, throughout the episode, maybe he'll pop a, a nut or a, or a, a washer or whatever throughout the show. And then at the end of the episode, he just transposes his arm into this huge mech or huge like gun, shoots it once, and that's the end of it. Um, so, you know, if I were to make a really good comparison, and, and while watching this, I, it kept coming in my head again and again and again, is Vash Stampede. Uh, you know, Vash has a such a huge personality, and he's really, you know, comedic and funny and lighthearted at times, but also when he's serious... His seriousness reminds me of Bolt Crank. Uh, you could probably write all of Bolt's lines in the entire anime on one piece of paper. He's very, very quiet. Uh, you know, he doesn't really have much personality to him. Each episode is sort of like he's he's a mercenary, so he takes odd jobs here or there, but he sort of does it in his own way. And each episode sort of winds up where at the end of it, you know, Bolt just does one thing and it's over. There's a giant uh, creature attacking the village and Bolt just... <laughs> Done. Game over. Episode over. Um, I will say, you know, the show's 12 episodes long. There's probably about four or five mini arcs, you know. So, for example, the first two episodes were isolated. Then the s three and four were one story. Then, like, four, five, six, seven, and eight were one story. And then nine and ten were one. And eleven and twelve were one. And they were all separate. There's no, like, continuing over, you know, overarching plot that you can follow. The middle arc, you know, the I think it was like six, seven, eight, nine, whatever episodes it was, where he's he's in like a almost like a Slayers esque universe, you know, sort of old timey but futuristic at the same time, was the most enjoyable for me. I highly enjoyed that. And if that was its own anime, I probably would have given 
you know, bull crank or uh, bull crank eat man 98, uh, a lot higher of a rating in my mind. Um, but overall the show had its ebbs and flows. I think that you should watch it for one reason and one reason only is so that you can see for all the new anime fans, all of the new anime viewers who are used to watching shows like this and with expectations like this, you can watch something a lot older and see what anime was like, you know, where anime came from. And maybe you'll even enjoy it, you know, to a certain degree. I did enjoy it to a certain degree. Um, this is extremely out of print. Uh, you know, you might be able to pick it up on eBay for like five bucks or so. I don't know, depending upon the listing. Like I said, I bought this in a, a bulk lot, sort of. So I think I got it pretty cheap. Um, it's not something you need to buy. If you can stream it, I highly doubt this is available for legal streaming anywhere. You might even be able to just find the, the videos on YouTube because of how old it is, because of how, you know, nobody's really looking to make money on Eat Man 98. Uh, but I do think it's worth checking out just, you know, for that reason alone. You can get a sort of perspective uh, on older anime. So there we go. Another four anime uh, for you guys. Uh, that was Manaka Box, Seki-kun, The Master of Killing Time, Tokyo Ghoul Season 2, and Eat Man 98. Uh, I'm finally catching up <laughs> with doing these vlogs. Uh, Eat Man was the second to last anime that I watched. I just finished watching Akama Ga Kill. Uh, so that will be, uh, you know, starting off in the next uh, vlog. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. You know, let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought. If you have seen any of these four anime, I'm assuming a lot of you have seen Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, it's sort of definitely the, the most popular of the four anime we, uh, we just went over. Um, but I'd love to know you guys' thoughts. You know, maybe uh, you're interested in watching Seki-kun. I think that you guys really enjoy Seki-kun. Maybe you're ever, maybe you've heard of Eat Man before. Maybe, you know, Eat Man is your favorite anime. Who knows? That's the one great thing about anime is something that I just discovered or maybe even I've just introduced to a few of you guys is another viewer's favorite show. Um, that's one great thing about anime is you never know what someone's favorite show is, and it's always a great way to get other people into your favorite show by talking about it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let's me know that you guys enjoy these videos and that you want to see more. Uh, if this is the first video you've watched, highly doubt it is at this point. Uh, I don't know, almost 20 minutes into the video probably, <laughs> and you want to see more, uh, then please subscribe.